So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to upgrade the spec flow from 1.9 to 2.1. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to the manage NuGet package. And here there is something called updates. So you can see that our spec flow has got some update and you can see the latest version is 2.1. So I'm just going to update the spec flow with 2.1. All right, it is done. Let's close this. And now hopefully if I see this error is gone, right? Which is good. So now let me try to build the solution. Everything looks okay. It is also a good practice that if you modify anything in the EA employee test project, you also modify the same in the EA out of framework as well, because this version of spec flow is also 1.9. So let's go to the manage NuGet package, go to the updates and modify the spec flow to one point from 1.9 to 2.1. So I'm going to update that as well. All right, great. I'm just going to do this execution to perform the operation. So what is this piece of code actually doing? You can see that we are getting the step name using the scenario contest dot current dot step contest dot step info dot text. So this is going to give you the step name for me. And this guy, the feature contest dot current dot feature info dot title is going to give the feature name for me. And this scenario name is going to give the scenario name. The scenario info dot title. So if the scenario contest dot current dot test error is not equal to null, which means if there is any exception or errors, then it is going to write that right here using this particular property scenario contest dot current dot test error dot stack trace. And if there is no error, then it's going to say passed. Super easy, right? And you can see that I'm writing everything within after step. And the reason is because if your test executes, then only after the step, it is going to return, write the result for you within your test database. So this is the only modification which I'm going to do in my EA out of framework. And you can see that all the magics will happen to insert the record into my exit automation reporting system. Very, very fast and fluid, right? So let's try to execute the test and see how things works. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to build the solution and let's go to the test explorer. It seems like everything's okay. So I'm going to run a very, very small feature this time. Let's say check login with correct username and password. So let's right click and run the selected test. Oops, we got an error. And it says that the test initialize should be static. Hmm. Oh, all right. So this should be static. The test initialize method should be static. And if this is made as static, then you need to make this as static as well. So I'm going to save this and let me try to run the selected test. All right, it opened the browser. So, all right, super fast. It executed the test and you can see that we now should have a run of employee app Karthik Sam 1.0, 1.0, Windows 10 in our test cycle ID. So let's hop over here and you can see that last time we executed, we don't have the exit automation employee result. So I'm just going to refresh it and you can see that it has created a employee app, Karthik, Sam, Ono 1.0 and 1.0 for the application version. So if I click this 123, cool, right? You can see that it is actually showing you the login information. So it's saying that the feature name is login. The scenario name is login with correct password. And the step name is I click the login passed. I click the login link. I enter the username and password. I navigate to the application and see the application opened. I should see the username with hello. So everything looks good except this throttle steps is 12. Maybe it's kind of bug. We have to fix it. But the total idea here is using a very, very super cool code change just to add two lines of code right here will do a lot of stuff for you to insert the record and creating a test cycle ID. And the very neat idea of inserting a record or after running the test is using this after step. And if you want to see a failure result, what we can do, let's go to the login button F12 and it says that when I click the login button, right? So maybe I intentionally make some 
change here in the btn login. So let's say instead of input.btn, I'm just going to change to btns. I'm going to save it. And let's try to run this test and see how it works. This time we will get an exception. And we also expect that exception should be recorded in our exit automation reporting system. And also it should show us the exception in a red color, like a failure. And you can see that the test has got failed saying no such element exception. And now if we go to the exit automation reporting system homepage, we have 124. There we go. So it says when I click the login button, I'm getting this exception. And how is this coming in the first? And you can see that this particular step, I click login button. Let's copy this and we'll see where the failure has actually happened. When I click, then I click the login button. Error could not find the element exception. And that's where the exception has happened. And that's why you're seeing an exception right here. And you can also see that if there is anything failed, then the particular step will be displayed on the top so that it will be in a clear notice without any problem. So this is how you can make use of our exit automation reporting system, exit automation database to perform the data insertion into the reporting server and also view that using the exit automation reporting system UI. So the only change is this, right? So that's it guys. Thank you once again for watching this video and have a great day.